basically, you know, developers, when they are trying to build things, they have to focus on the user experience. This is one of the things that they have to do. So uh, they can actually now start to focus more on their clients without having to worry about, you know, intricacies and suddenly your client coming up or your merchant coming up and saying, hey, by the way, I'm thinking of selling to that specific, you know, I got an order from that specific area in Denver, Colorado, and uh, I I think there are multiple taxes here. Can you find it out? Hey, he's not a, <laughs> you know, start, just, 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 you can use Avalara for that. And I was blown off by, you know, when I came in and I was like, okay, you just do this, 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 and that's it. Okay. So the rest of the calculation is taken care in the back end. And so, you know, as a tech person myself, I was blown off. So I'm pretty much sure that many of my developer brethren will also feel the same <laughs> at some point. Hey, Bob the BP here, and welcome to Do the Woo the WooCommerce Builder Podcast. This show is brought to you by Hostinger. Whether you are a small or large agency, they have you covered for managed WooCommerce hosting for your clients' projects at Hostinger.com. I'll tell you more about Hostinger later in the show, but let's join Marcus as he chats with Prashant Rana from Avalara. Now, we all know paying taxes is inevitable, but for your clients or for your own agency, collecting them is also something that cannot be avoided nor done the wrong way. In the show, we hear Prashant's journey to product manager and his interest in helping online stores become tax compliant. We aren't here to scare you off. We're here to share Prashant's insights to help you. So let's dive in. Well, hey, everyone. I'm Marcus Burnett, and uh, it's been a minute, but I'm glad to be back uh, in the in the host seat here. And I'm excited to welcome a guest today. We have Prashant Rana uh, from Avalara joining me. And uh, yeah, we're going to get a chance to know a little bit about him. Prashant, how are you doing today? Doing good, Marcus. How about you? Not too bad. Not too bad. Um, we're just going to dive right on in, and I'm going to just see if I can uh, get you to tell us a little bit about yourself. Can you... Uh, Share a little bit about your background and how you came to work as a product manager at Avalara. Yeah, it's uh, so uh, I'm, I've been a senior, um, I'm a senior product manager at Avalara uh, at, uh, right now, and I've uh, been working in the tech field for over twelve years. Um, did quite a few roles. Started off as a developer, and incidentally, I was a PHP developer when I started my first foray into products. So I started off as a database developer, but that got boring very quickly, you know, just writing SQL queries day by day. And then it was like, hey, there's this thing that we can do this packaging and build uh, lightweight uh, end-to-end pieces of uh, software that we can package and sell. So it's like, okay, that sounds interesting. And that brought me into the PHP world. And then that was my... I think my leap into product, because then I saw the end-to-end building and I said, okay, hey, I want to go into the other areas as well. And that brought me into product. Uh, have been working in product management for a while now uh, across several companies. And the latest one is Avalara, where I'm having fun as uh, in the tax world. I never thought I would say this ever, but I am saying that now. <laughs> So yeah, that's 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 kind of my story, and yeah, I'm excited to, to be here today to be to discuss uh, Avalara's integrations with uh, you know WooCommerce, WordPress. That's the area I work in in the integration space uh, with uh, several of our partners. So yeah, I'm glad to be here, and thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Um, in stalking your LinkedIn profile just a little bit, um, I kind of took a peek at some of the. The companies that you worked for and your degrees, and I saw you have a, a degree in computer engineering and an and the MBA. Um, how have these shaped how you think about the products at Avalara? Oh yeah, so both of them have been invaluable. So uh, having the computer engineering degree has uh, you know kept me sharp technically, even though you know I've, uh, over time I've uh, let the smarter folks <laughs> in development take over, but. Uh, uh, to be able to make sense of what they say, uh, this uh, it, it always helps to uh, you know always lean back to the basics and uh, keep myself updated. So 
you know, it helps to keep the conversation flowing. And of course, the MBA has been helpful in being able to converse with so many of our partners because uh, and also understand the tax world a little better uh, because you, you learn about all these kind of things uh, during the MBA, you know, how these uh, financial implications come up and you do realize, yes, you know, so many companies have been pulled up for financial audits. So you, you do realize the kind of impact uh, any financial app or any assistant app to help you comply with your financial needs uh, is how important that is. So I think Avalara stands at the intersection of both of them. And uh, and that's where both of these, uh, you know, uh, studying both of these courses actually has helped me uh, so far. Yeah, that totally makes sense from a, you know, tax compliance um, company to, to have that MBA, I think would be invaluable to, you know, just keep an eye on, on all of that and um, love that. That's coming from the computer engineering side that you're able to have those conversations with the with the engineers still. Um, looping back to Avalara uh, and, and joining there, what initially attracted you to the e-commerce and tax compliance space, particularly in relation to WooCommerce? Uh, so basically, uh, the I would say a little bit the pandemic because I just saw the way the trends were going on and uh, the way e-commerce kind of boomed. It has had its, uh, you know, good times and bad times, but uh, it was a philosophy I had already bought into. Even prior to the pandemic, I was seeing the kind of headwinds that were going around with that. Uh, these were part of our discussions, even at, at school with my peers and seeing the kind of uh, way uh, e-commerce was going to, you know, start taking over. And it does not need to... Uh, you know, we don't need to be locked in to really take the benefits of e-commerce. So, and WooCommerce being one of the largest platforms on which e-commerce is enabled and in an open source world. So you you kind of like have your own freedom around it. So it's like, again, the best of both worlds. Uh, and <laughs> going back to my development days, I could see the kind of flexibility that, uh, you know, a WordPress app could kind of give you. I, you know, I dabbled with WordPress, uh, Drupal, media wiki at that point and you know the ability to quickly turn around something experiment and you know get back to uh, uh what what you really want to build uh, along with feedback you know that's what kind of amazed me with uh, woocommerce and then you do realize that you have to uh even if you start selling taxing the taxation is a big big deal uh, in that and like I said, I never thought I thought taxes would be interesting, but then you start to see the kind of complexity that comes up and during the interview process and during my, when I was talking with folks, it was like, oh, this is the level of complexity you have to keep in mind. And that's what I was like, okay, this is a challenge that I want to be a part of. Yeah. that And that totally makes sense with the pandemic. Um, that's not how I got involved with WooCommerce, but definitely how I uh, joined a WooCommerce specific company as well was right at the beginning of the pandemic. And so it just exploded and, and, you know, people needed help. People needed folks to come on board and, and help with that. Uh, what my, what my former manager coined a uh, catastrophic success. <laughs> it was a, <laughs> an interesting time for sure. We've touched on it just a little bit, danced around it. Some we've mentioned, uh, you know, tax compliance and stuff, but why don't you uh, maybe give our listeners a little bit of an overview of what Avalara does and how it supports WooCommerce users? Yeah, so Avalara has been partnering with WooCommerce since around 2015 uh, with, to provide the sales tax capabilities. So it is available as a WooCommerce tax extension, which is powered by Avalara, and uh, it helps deliver quick and accurate sales tax calculation, reporting, and the sales tax filing. For, for, for businesses and that's primarily because anyone who wants to sell right the focus should be on selling and expanding and you know being able to 
grow their business and uh, rather than uh, getting caught in this myriad of uh, uh, complex and overlapping tax rules so that's where avalara comes in as a handy plugin and that you can uh, that you can use and that's that's what avalara has been striving for and uh, with woocommerce especially because it's it's an uh, you know again it's uh, a wordpress based and it's in the open source world uh, it has been built with uh, developer focus in mind so basically you know developers when they are trying to build things they have to focus on the user experience this is one of the things that they have to do so uh, they can actually now start to focus more on their clients without having to worry about you know intricacies and suddenly your client coming up or your merchant coming up and saying hey by the way i'm thinking of selling to that specific you know i got an order from that specific area in denver colorado and uh, i i think there are multiple taxes here can you find it out hey he's not a <laughs> you know start just 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 you can use avalara for that and i was blown off by you know when i came in and i was like okay you just do this 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 and that's it okay so the rest of the calculation is taken care in the back end so you know as a tech person myself i was blown off so i am pretty much sure that many of my developer brethren will also feel the same <laughs> at some point yeah for sure um more specifically to you how do you approach building and improving products at avalara that cater to the woocommerce community yeah so like Again, um, all of our partnerships, you know, start with our focus on um, the partner, uh, partner first kind of mentality, uh, and es- essentially that translates into customer first. So we think about the kind of personas who would be interacting with these uh, plugins or integrations in the first place. So that's kind of the way uh, you know we at Avalara think, and it's also been a personal philosophy for me. And like in WooCommerce, especially because the first set. Uh, of eyes that we get on are the developers yes the merchants think about it they know that they have to be tax compliant but also the developers who enable uh, this platform for the merchants they are the first set of eyes on this so uh, that's how we kind of approach this to try and make it as uh, easy to configure easy to understand and also easy to extend so you know uh, being a developer when i would pick out extensions for my platforms i would uh, totally concentrate on how easy it was to uh, a install like would it would it con- uh, confirm to all the prerequisites or the the general tech stack that is being used around uh, at that point of time and it is uh, taking care of all the potential upgrades that are coming in uh, in the uh, uh, tech stack and then also see can i extend this can i make this more customizable if if someone comes to me and says hey i want to alter the flow a little bit can i do that and with woocommerce we also provide uh, developers with a lot of handy hooks that allow them to customize and uh, we are always open to uh, to suggestions requests and uh, you know if folks go onto the woocommerce uh, uh, extensions page and find avalara you can also submit a request asking for uh, a different hook if you need it once you define the business case for us so you know we are very flexible that way to support uh, developers to bring out the best in woocommerce without really worrying about the taxes behind yeah it's, that's awesome catering to both the uh, store owners and developers as a builder or an agency managing multiple sites check out hostinger.com their infrastructure brings your client site speed uptime and security. Also at your fingertips, you'll find a powerful suite of tools for security and performance, code and content management. Now add to that the ability to manage your WordPress website through WP CLI for control configuration and plugin updates, enhanced WordPress acceleration powered by Lightspeed Enterprise, control over auto updates, free migrations, and of course, the essential staging sites. Through all of their services and features comes e-commerce optimization for your clients' woo shops. So when you think about it, overall, everything you need to keep your client sites running smooth can be found with their agency hosting at hostinger.com. You shared a little bit already about just how 
really simple it is to to get you know tax compliance set up on a WooCommerce store. Um, I'm curious though, maybe even beyond that, what do you think are some of the most pressing challenges for store owners when it comes to tax compliance and and anything sort of in the tax compliance realm? Yeah, so not only store owners, I would say everyone. <laughs> it's tax season, hey. <laughs> so even filing personal taxes can get so complicated very quickly. But uh, again, like I was blown away by seeing the kind of complexity that comes in uh, so quickly. You know, states like Colorado, for example, and Louisiana, the home rule states having, you know, different types of sales tax, but exempt from local tax. And uh, being able to handle all this kind of uh, different businesses that come in and especially for e-commerce, right? Because yes, it's easy to start an e-commerce business. I guess uh, the way I see it, it is the maintenance and uh, long-term sustenance, which is the kind of uh, challenge to be compliant with so many things as you start expanding. So, hey, who does not want to expand their business? But you know, to do that within uh, the, re- the regulations, the compliance framework, it is it is a challenge out there and especially on something which is so well defined but complex as sales tax so you know i'll just give you an example uh what, what, what you know sales tax holidays for example you know which some some of them have overlapping time frames and different exemptions at different points of time so one thing like uh like florida for example has tax free periods for baby and toddler clothing from 1st july 2022 to June 30th, 2023. And there is a back to school t- tax holiday from July 25th through August 25th, 2022. Now, both of these areas overlap. So uh, keeping track of these happening, you know, and especially with the, and the pandemic has also been one of the features, right? Because many of the states declared tax holidays, lower tax rates to help people uh, uh, th- throughout, depending on the demographics of the specific state who needed assistance. So Keeping track of all this was always challenging. And you can see these are overlapping time periods. It becomes complicated there. So <laughs> that is that is like one, one uh, kind of like a f- example that that is uh, that comes to my mind out there. And uh, also the other challenges that I feel is especially returns. So yes, everyone bought into the e-commerce boom, but then you see a lot of buyer regret come up. Uh, as you might have seen in uh, a lot of analyst reports and a lot of industry reports, like you have the holiday season for buying and then you have the return season, you know, running through January into February and you see a lot of returns coming in, a lot of buyer remorse, a lot of, uh, I would say, uh, uh, stuff that people realize that, hey, you know, this is not exactly what I wanted or some people were just buying impulsively. <laughs> so, and that has also affected uh, uh, consumer patterns in choosing what to buy. So uh, I was reading the other day that there's a survey which says that uh, 40% of the consumers are held back from buying uh, online due to the frustration to the return policies. And more than 60% are actually for, uh, looking at the return policies before choosing to buy on an e-commerce store. So for e-commerce vendors, now this has become a point where they have to ensure that their returns returns are hassle-free and easy uh, because that kind of gives confidence, even though if people don't utilize it, just having that kind of assurance that, hey, I'll get my money back without any uh, complications and it's a frustration-free return is going to be an important part going forward. So, and we also uh, recently, so we, uh, Avalara publishes this uh, blog called Wacky Tax Wednesdays, pretty interesting, pretty funny uh, instances as well, but it's funny when you read it. I I really feel it's not funny for the people who actually go (laughs) through that. So, you know, one of the recent examples was uh, somewhere in Virginia, where uh, uh, the retailer was shipping uh, prepaid uh, labels for returns, but actually they didn't tax the return fees uh, because uh, uh, as part of the uh, transaction and uh, the Virginia Department of Ta- uh, Taxation actually treated this charge as taxable restocking fees 
once the stuff came back and uh, they had to the retailer had to file in multiple appeals after two appeals finally you know the state auditor was like this is the first time or this is a new thing uh, so we we'll let you go but hey not all auditors are that uh, generous overall mm-hmm. uh, so so you know in summary i would the, the way i would put it is like uh you know any navigating sales laws and regulation itself can be daunting and add to that this complexity of uh you know returns and tax holidays and exemptions uh it can get complicated very quickly yeah the the buyer's remorse aspect of it totally makes sense right when you're buying things online you aren't necessarily sure exactly what you're going to get and so having that out being able to return something if it's not you know if it's not what you expected it to be totally makes sense but it's very interesting to me i didn't realize that there were tax implications on the returns as well yes uh, and we are starting to see uh, trends around it and uh, you know that's what avlara does best you know so we get to see this from uh, many of our partners so many of our customers and millions of millions of transactions that come in and then you know we end up codifying that and bringing it in as updates so that you know folks really don't have to worry about that yeah i know that avalara does more than just tax compliance for e-commerce stores um i know that's a a slice of what avalara does um you know kind of keeping that in mind and even the the tax compliance part and e-commerce stores what do you think um that's avalara apart from other tax compliance solutions that are available for woocommerce i feel uh the comprehensiveness of the in, uh, data that is available is kind of like what sets sets avalara apart for uh, from uh, many other tax providers and the regular updates that are there also we we are like uh, finding better and better ways of uh, uh you know Uh, delivering on uh, all these kind of uh, updates from time to time we are automating a lot of these processes so um going forward the way we the way we see is uh, bringing in a lot more automation and a lot more compre- like reporting itself is uh, is available but you know now uh, things like you know getting insights out of it is going to be essential going forward uh in addition like you said sales tax is one of the things avalara is in the compliance space technique so so it is not only uh sales tax but then other areas of compliance such as exemptions so you know exemption certificate management uh uh you you can uh, think about business licenses hey you need to register in another state you know you can use business licenses for that returns uh as you expand your business you are liable for tax collection and uh, uh reporting of that in different states so kind of like the entire suite and as we see uh, woocommerce holding such a uh, hold on the e-commerce space you essentially understand that uh all these services are going to be needed by uh businesses as they scale and grow uh and avalarize their with, with them for the journey so you know that one avatar tax account for them can do much much more than just sales tax calculation so often when avalara and woocommerce are kind of in the same sentence right or you see avalara's you know sponsoring do the woo or or other things within the space so much of that is just you know people connect that with tax compliance and collecting sales tax at the woocommerce store but we wanted to make sure that everyone understood that avalara does so much more than just collecting sales tax at a woocommerce store so appreciate you uh you know sharing some of the the additional pieces there as well kind of you know along along the lines of what you've been talking about and you've already shared a little bit about automating processes too but how do you all stay up to date with the constantly changing tax regulations to ensure that avalara solutions remain current we have automation there too and also a bunch a lot of really really smart people and tax experts and subject matter experts who are uh, looking through with uh, uh through all this information uh i would like to plug in one more product that you know avlara acquired a couple of years ago avlara tax research which is also comprehensive source of uh all tax information uh you know 
key that that is regularly updated uh, for all the changes that happens. So if you go, if you uh, get access to that, you can even go down to see each regulation or hey, that amendment came up in that uh, state senate and that's that's the uh, uh, new regulation that was passed and those kind of differences and updates are kind of uh, published every uh, every week every month uh, through that channel as well so now we have like the combined power of the uh, you know the engine and also you know having it in verbiage form if someone is as curious to know about that so you can you can see like the kind of uh, uh, comprehensiveness of all the information that is now available that is uh, we keep a constant tab on that and uh, our tax uh, engine is updated regularly uh, with those updates coming in yeah there's there's a lot to a lot to keep track of there and uh, i find it so interesting that you can even dig down into into the reporting and stuff to see, you know, where, you know, different Senate regulations and all of that come into play. That's, that's mind boggling to me, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. It, it is, it, uh, to you, you have been in this space. I have, I'm recent, uh, like I would, I would consider myself newer, but when, and when, uh, it is mind boggling to me as well. Like, Hey, I work with documents all the, in my in my in my job, and even going through that, it, it's like I really appreciate the folks who actually you know go through this, make sense of it, uh, see how it is relevant to each of our uh, you know different categories of products that we have, and what are the kind of implications it is going to have, and uh, help us ensure that we are able to provide this as part of our integrations and by extension to partners like WooCommerce. So it it's a lot of effort, but uh, that's that's what we are here for. Sure, for sure. Um, before we wrap up, I want to loop back to you and specifically your um, you know senior product management role. Looking ahead, what do you envision for the future of tax compliance in the e-commerce space? And how do you see Avalara stepping in to help um, you know, specifically WooCommerce store owners, but just e-commerce in general with um, what's coming down the line? Yeah, so uh, with e-commerce, we are like kind of seeing uh, all the trends uh, um, uh, and we are trying to be, uh, you know, we are abreast of uh, that. Uh, like like we said, like things like returns are starting to take uh, uh, come in the, uh, in the forefront. Uh, similarly, uh, checkout processes are getting a little bit, bit more, uh, you know, simple on the uh, on the front end, but complicated on the back end, especially like things like buy now, pay later coming into the picture, uh, where you are having like multiple multiple payments that will go through, and you have to like split taxes across all of all of them. You know, you have to know how to disperse all that, and then that goes into your reporting, that goes into your filing. So uh, those kind of things are going to uh, come up as challenges. Uh, and mix both of them. So by some somebody bought it on buy now, pay later, pay two installments, and by the time you returned it back again. So you can see the kind of complexity that can quickly come up there. <laughs> so we, uh, so those are those are kind of things that we are uh, keeping an eye out for uh, as as we go through. Uh, automation will be a big picture because uh, will be a big picture. Again, we are quite automated. Uh, already so most of our integrations allow for you know just plug and play and uh, you know uh, rest assured kind of thing but uh, again we are also uh, are uh, uh, you know actively seeking feedback from our partners partners like WooCommerce uh, are uh, valuable to us uh, and their feedback uh, and also like like I said the developer community so say they are coming back to us with you know these kind of hooks that we need uh, that's that's what we want to build in. So uh, that's how we actually actually ended up uh, building and we are providing more and more customizable uh, features, you know, so that you can uh, do all those kind of things. Like, for example, filtering the, fil filtering which records need to go into Avatex, for example. It, that is something that we brought in and you can code it rather than uh, being uh, tied to a, a pre-built extension. So... Both both these uh, aspects are being uh, looked looked towards, and uh, we see those uh, trends across the board. 
uh, the other area that I'm uh, I'm seeing is headless commerce, which is coming up a lot, and uh, because everyone uh, wants to customize their experience, have a control on their tech stack, their tech spend uh, overall. Um, so those, um, you know, supporting those kind of uh, partnerships is also going to be essential as we go forward. Um, so those those are the basic things that I that I'm able to see. That's awesome. Well, Prashant, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you on. Uh, you are doing great stuff in a space that is super complex and super complicated, but Avalara makes it easy for the end users. And so um, thank you so much for coming on and sharing all of that and uh, keep up the good work. Yeah, it's been great uh, being part of this podcast and discussing, you know, Avalara's continued commitment to this growing partnership with WooCommerce. And uh, yeah, before we uh, uh, before we go, I just wanted to put a plug in for uh, you know the WooCom uh, uh, for the WooCommerce folks. So if you are attending WordCamp uh, in Europe in Athens in Greece, Athens, Greece later this June, so please make sure to stop by the Avalara booth. We'll all be in bright orange. Very difficult to miss. And uh, also, if you're part of the WooCommerce Woo Expert Program, be on the lookout for more information and updates uh, coming from Avalara your way very soon. Like I said, we love to support our uh, developer ecosystem. So yeah, that's that's. Uh, thank you for having me here, uh, Marcus. This has been a pleasure. Absolutely. And I should be in Greece as well. So I look forward to seeing you in person. Likewise. Thanks so much. All right. Thank you. Hey, Bob WP again. And this makes me think of a recent conversation where we talked about buying a car versus learning how to build one yourself. I think tax compliance might work well with that analogy. So I hope you enjoyed the stories and insights from Prashant. And if you did, don't forget to thank our pod friend, Hostinger, for their support of our community as a sponsor. Check them out at hostinger.com. And until the next time, keep on doing the boo.